ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांत संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम शो स्वामी वॉज लाइक एनी अदर ऑर्डनरी बॉय वेरी ह्यूमरस एंड प्लेफुल एवरी वन इन द मैरिज पार्टी इंस्टेंटली लाइक हिम स्वामी डेमोन्स्ट्रेटेड ए शेडो प्ले ऑफ एनिमल्स एंड बर्ड्स ऑन द वाइट वॉल विथ इज हैंड्स पीपल स्पेशली चिल्ड्रन एंजॉय इट वेरी मच Tolosema an elderly lady was 80 years old at the time of the narrator who narrated this episode when swami came to the marriage function on the first day he sat in the marriage hall many people did not know in the beginning who this boy was nor did anyone bother much about him suddenly her grandmother rushed towards him and caught hold of his small feet it was intriguing to many an 80 year old lady catching this boy's feet my grandmother i mean the one who narrated this episode her grandmother 8 years old about whom i have been mentioning she was crying swami took her head in both his hands and gently stroked it all over from then on her grandmother never had to suffer any more pain in fact she was suffering from this excruciating pain before and with the touch of swami that pain vanished completely whenever he visited weddings people used to forget about the wedding and throng around him baba's bangalore visits had created quite a sensation the good word spread and many more devotees from bangalore started visiting puttaparthi among others who came to baba in 1944 were raval sashri rao cmh ranjot singh ankamma captain tangavelu modaliyar and eh tirumal rao it was about this time that the first book on sai baba was published this book in telugu was entitled sai shri charitra the other was kondappa who happened to be the school teacher of bhagavan subhanacharya also had taught in the eighth standard in the board elementary school in pokapatnam a little later he heard sai baba's devotion to sri d sai of his complete transformation from a simple unostentatious student into an altogether different miracle worker he grew very eager to meet him the superficial observers Baba might have seemed to be a mad boy but Subhanacharya's first impression of the lad was that he was a great devotee like Prahlad however as days passed on and Subhanacharya's visit to Puttaparthi became more frequent he gradually became convinced that Sai Baba was not an ordinary human being but a boy endowed with supernatural powers one day we see Kondappa and subhanacharya both happened to be his teachers came to puttaparthi to satisfy their long time desire to know about the early life of shirdi sai baba because the available books threw no light on this unknown period they were wonderstruck when sai baba revealed that he was shirdi sai baba himself he also asked them to stay there for the night when he would narrate his life story granting them their hearts wish even before asking during that momentous night they heard the story of shirdi sai baba from such a sai baba who gave them in addition the darshan of his previous incarnation in flesh and blood see that at bukapatnam t vishwanath rao of anantapur was destined to see baba earlier in the summer of 1944 Rao would recall later how as a young boy he had his first darshan of Baba. He would describe Baba as a young lad of light brown complexion in his late teens, short of stature, lean with well-groomed but slightly curly hair. He wore a cotton grey coloured kurta reaching down to the middle of the thighs and a cotton dhoti. He had wooden sandals and was uh, at the head of a small group of five or six children and elders. Rao's sister Kalavatamma sat down on the floor 
stretching her legs and thought to herself that Baba looked like a madman with a strange hairstyle. Baba approached her and asked, Am I mad? Tell me, am I mad? Surprised and flustered by Baba's sudden question, she hurriedly said, No, no, I never said that. But as she was replying, she realized that Baba was merely reflecting her thoughts. He certainly could read her mind to say the least. Rao had lost his baggage on his way to Mukhapatnam, but sure enough, as Baba predicted, he received his lost baggage by the same evening. In an interview with the family, Baba blessed them with Vibhut Prasadam and directed them in their search for a suitable match for Rao's sister, Kalavatamma. He also promised to visit their house in Anantapur, which he did. Baba arrived at T. Chidambaraya, Rao's father, residence at Anantapur from Kadiri. At about noon time on the sacred Jesta Purnima day, that is on Monday, the 5th May, 1944. This was during the Second World War. To save fuel, vehicle motors had been converted into coal-fired steam engines. Baba was given the privilege of sitting next to the driver. The bus stopped right in front of Chidambaraya's house. Baba wore a kurta, a dhoti, and wooden sandals. After lunch and a brief rest, he called the family for an interview. He appeared to know every nook and corner of the house. The family offered worship to him during his brief stay of three days. He even exorcised Chidambaraya's daughter, Kalavatamma, and daughter-in-law, Narasamma, both of whom were believed to have been under the influence of evil spirits. That's how Rao narrates this. The process was very elaborate, ritualistic in those days. Both my sister and sister-in-law were called in. It appears he pulled out a small hair and he wound it around a silver wire rod. The length of the hair was astonishingly long, a few meters having been pulled out from the vortex of the head. Neither of them had any pain. It was later sealed in a locket of silver as a talisman, and each of them was asked to wear it around the neck. The lockets given to them remained throughout their lives. That night, the whole family slept very soundly and could get up only in the late hours of the morning. But Baba got up early, cleaned the premises, had his bath, and kept hot water ready for their bath. He also placed coconut and other things at the doorway of the main entrance and performed puja. He said that he had driven away the evil spirits and they could live free from fear from then on. Baba's relationship with the family was very informal. The family would sit around him and attend to things like arranging a seat cushion or driving away flies or mosquitoes. In the middle of his talk, he would often abruptly go into very deep sleep and those around would prevent others from disturbing him. There were huge crowds of people eager to see Baba. So much so that one day during dinner, Siddhambaraya's wife, Subbamma, closed the door of the house to keep visitors out. Baba insisted that doors be opened. The lady protested, saying that she had prepared food for only 50 people, whereas the crowds outside consisted of more than 200 people. Baba went to the kitchen, removed the lids covering the dishes, sprinkled water on them and asked her to serve the food to all devotees. To everybody's surprise, a large surplus of food remained even after all the devotees had their fill. Three months later, in August and September, Baba decided to tour the Guti Taluk. He started from a small village called Ilur, situated five kilometers from Kalur. Railway station on the Guntakal Bangalore line on the south bank of the river Penar. This to give you an idea of Guti Taluk. Huge crowds began to stream into the house of the local village officer 
கர்ணம் ஆதிநாராயண் ராவ் வித் ஹூம் பாபா வாஸ் ஸ்டேயிங் Pamidi was a town located on the northern bank of the river consisting of businessmen and known as a commercial center though baba camped in illur for 15 days he did not visit pamidi baba himself used to lead the bhajans most of the time rao was staying at his uncle's house at pamidi and was trekking to illur for darshan On one such occasion he sang two devotional songs from the classic movie Bhakta Potana which was very popular then from then on baba began to call rao patal abai a singer boy that so swami has been of immense help to local villagers leading them towards the spiritual path not only that swami helped everybody giving them a relief from the influence of evil spirits those days people suffered heavily because of these evil spirits swami was of great help he was a reliever he cured all of them permanently once and for all these are all the episodes where we find swami extending his help to all who sought his refuge that's the old narration of his contribution to the local people baba suddenly left for anandpur all alone one day followed close on his heels by members of karnam's family protesting vehemently against his un- unannounced decision to go back baba was unmoved and went on at anandpur however he agreed to stay with one of the karnam's relatives to allay the fear of the karnam's family that his sudden departure spelled some calamity baba returned to illur before coming back to anandpur where he again stayed for a few days well we'll continue this in the next session thank you for your time